created using Powtoon.
Welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today is September 4th. It's about 3.30 in the morning. I just want to share with everyone something this morning. Uh, I saw a demonstration uh, maybe about a month ago in reference to our dark side and the power of prayer. If you continuously pray over and over and over again, things will eventually become clear. Although that was a lot of times when we pray to God, we don't get answers right away. Uh, but if you continuously pray, over and over things become clear so the demonstration involves this bottle and if you see the inside of this bottle is all dark liquid that represents our dark side and this cap represents our limitations so we as a human which is the bottle have limitations which is this cap so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this bottle into the sink and we're going to do a demonstration so let me put that there i'm going to turn the camera around so that everybody can see it. And hopefully you folks can all see it now. Okay, so you see the bottle. I'm going to turn the water on. Okay, so now everything inside is dark, which represents our body and our inside. And what I'm going to do, and this clear water represents our prayer. So you see the continuous water running. I'm going to now, as the prayer 
uh, as we're praying, I'm going to lift our limitations, which is the calf. And we're going to slowly add our prayer to this. We all go through dark times. I mean, I've had some dark years. I just didn't understand everything that was happening. I'm going to admit it that I'm not a super patient person. I tend to want answers right away and know what's happening and when I, uh, what I can do to solve it. I don't like not being happy and confident about things. It's just not who I am. But when I get down, it takes a lot for me to get back up. If we pray for a sign, which is this, the water is prayer, but just give up because we feel like God's already heard our prayer and he knows what we need, but he hasn't answered. It's kind of like when we were kids in a toy store and we kept asking our mom and dad for toys, but we never got any results. Yeah, it never worked for me either, but you get what I mean. Anyway, that is exactly what's happened to me in the past years. I have prayed and prayed and prayed, but haven't really gotten any results. The answer I thought God would give me uh, and especially in the time of, of frame, I thought my problems would be fixed, which was all before 2013. Then, in 2013, my cap of limitations was lifted. This is the cap. Remember this now. was lifted off the bottle, which is my body. Here is where I will just show you how that worked for me. So basically, we all have dark sides, which is what's in the bottle, was in the bottle. We are facing, and we take the limitations off our mind, which was the cap I lifted. Don't limit what he can do, because we have to just trust in the Lord. That sometimes, even after we pray and we just give up, and it is often why we get defeated. However, even though nothing has really changed, we just keep praying. That's the prayer, the sign of the prayer, the flowing Lord. Just keep praying and never ever give up praying. And if we do that and devote ourselves completely to the Lord, He will pull us through. The dark times will go away and we just have to be patient. I know it's hard. Being patient truly is a virtue. But by never ever giving up on prayer, it's going to show you that God will eventually answer all your prayer. And the more we pray, which is this water going into the bottle, one day everything will become clear. You see how clear this is now? That is the power of prayer. Folks, I think that demonstration says it all. If we had a bottle which represents our body and the bottle, uh, everything was dark on the inside. And the water coming out of the faucet represents the prayer day after day after day. Just keeps adding to the darkness which was in the bottle. Eventually, all that prayer has to turn what was dark inside this bottle, which is our body, has to change and become as clear as this water in here. That, folks, is the power of prayer. Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back Today show with Ralph Friedrichs. Fact or fiction, Friedrichs, believe it or not, today we are talk, we're going to mention some myths and facts about alcohol and addictions. I want everybody to realize that in the background the music's a little different today. I put on the 70s music for a little bit of more uh, excitement for this video. As always, I want to give a shout out to my good friend, my mentor, my professor, Dr. Luis Gonzalez from StartingPointMN.com. You can reach him at 844-414-8444. He will walk with you from your addiction to your recovery, hand in hand, one day at a time. He will also never, ever look at your past. He is not a counselor. He is not a therapist. What he is is an addiction recovery coach, as am I. We both truly believe and motivating you, talking about today and what your future brings to you. We don't care what happened yesterday because it's gone. Let's worry about today. So call him at 844-414-844 at, uh, at starting point MN. That's Dr. Lewis Gonzalez. He also can turn you into an addiction recovery coach. If you have professionalism, personality, and passion, and you have an addiction uh, background, maybe battling your own addiction or helping other people battle their addiction, call him at 844-414-8444. That's Dr. Luis Gonzalez at startingpointmn.com. 
Give a shout out to Global Eyeglasses, where they are focused on saving you money. Go online to www.globaleyeglasses.com and you will find over 1,200 frames. You will find frames that start as little as $6, and that $6 gives you single vision plastic uncoated lenses. The frames go up to approximately $49. You can find progressive lenses in there. You can find uh, line bifocals. You can find transitions, progressive, uh, excuse me, photochromatics, uh, thinner lenses. You can find all that at www.globaleyeglasses.com. They are focused on saving you money. Folks, if you have any questions whatsoever about ordering your glasses, text me at 631-599-0218. I am a board certified optician and I know globaleyeglasses.com inside and out. So please text me 631-599-0218 and I will help you order your glasses and go to www.globaleyeglasses.com. Folks, also I want you to, or I ask you please to go to my website www.takeyourlifebacktodayshow.com I never ever ask for anything, but I need two things in particular, and I need your help today, if you can. I need anyone that has access to any sort of studio within New York City, Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, Long Island, that I can utilize once or twice a week to shoot my videos. These videos are becoming bigger globally, and I need to uh, expand a little. I also need a better camera to use. If you can either... Uh, in that studio, possibly set up a camera, or possibly if you have an extra video camera you want to donate to a good cause to bring awareness to drug and alcohol abuse, text me 631-599-0218. Go to my website, www.takeyourlifebacktodayshow.com. Folks, fact or fiction? This is Friedrichs's Believe It or Not. We are going to, uh, this video is going to uh, correct common alcohol and drinking myths with research-based fact statistics. These are all research fact statistics. Myth number one is alcohol destroys brain cells. Well, what do you think? Do they? I personally, before I read the, uh, the fact on this, I personally believe that it will if you abuse it. So what is the fact? Fact is the moderate consumption of alcohol does not, does not destroy brain cells. Myth. White wine is a good choice for a person who wants a light drink with less alcohol. Fact. A glass of white wine, red wine, bottle of beer, or a shot of whiskey, or other distilled spirits all contain equivalent amounts of alcohol and are the same to a breathalyzer. In other words, a shot that might have a higher alcohol content or a beer that's 12 ounces or a glass that's 8 ounces all have the same amount of alcohol when it comes to a breathalyzer. Myth. A beer belly is caused by drinking beer. Well, a lot of people probably think that because why would it be called a beer belly? But a beer belly is caused by eating too much food. No beer or other alcohol beverages are necessary to give you that beer belly. It does not help to have the alcohol when you're consuming huge amount of foods. Next one, myth. Switching between beer, wine, spirits will lead to intoxication more quickly than sticking to one type of alcohol beverage. Fact is, the level of blood alcohol content, which other, otherwise is known as the BAC, is what determines sobriety or intoxication. Drinking coffee will help a drunk person get sober. Is that a myth or a fact? Only time can sober up a person. Not black coffee, a cold shower, exercise, or any common cure or factors. Only time. Because it needs to come out of your system. Myth. Drinking long enough will cause a person to become an alcoholic. Fact is, there is simply no scientific basis for that misperception, uh, which appears to have its origin in temperance and prohibitous ideology. Myth. Drinking alcohol gain uh, causes weight gain. The fact is there is very commonly believed myth that even among medical professionals because of alcohol calorie values that it will cause uh, uh, weight gain. Myth. Alcohol is the cause of alcoholism. What do you think? 
As a governmental alcohol agency has explained, alcohol is no more cause of alcoholism than sugar is cause of diabetes. The agency points out that if alcohol is cause alcoholism, then all drinkers would be alcoholics because there are people that drink alcohol that uh, don't become alcoholics. Alcoholism is defined as a disease in my book. If I, myth, if alcohol were less available, there would be fewer alcoholics. Fact is, there is an idea that has been tested through uh, um, different programs in the U.S. and a number of other countries. There is no association between the availability of alcohol and alcoholism because, folks, put it on the line of if drugs were less available, which they are legally, then drug abuse wouldn't be there because people will find what they need or want no matter how little is available. They'll pay whatever it takes. Myth. College life leads to drinking by most students who enter as uh, abstainers. Fact is, according to the federal statistics, most students arrive at college with prior drinking experience. Let's go right up there to myth. Binge drinking is an epidemic problem on college campuses. Fact is, binge drinking is clinically and commonly viewed as a period of extended t intoxication lasting several days during which time uh, the binger drops out of uh, usual life activities. has nothing to do just with college campuses. Binge drinking can happen in your own home. It happened in my own home because of me. Myth. Men and women of the same height and weight can drink the same. Fact is... Women are affected more rapidly because they tend to have a slightly higher proportion of fat to lean muscle tissue, thus concentrating alcohol a little more easily in their lower percentage of body water. Myth. A single sip of alcohol by a pregnant woman can cause her child to have fetal alcohol syndrome, otherwise known as FAC. Fact is, extensive medical research studying hundreds and thousands of women around the world fails to find scientific evidence that light drinking, much less a sip of alcohol by expanded mother, can cause fetal syndrome. Of course, the very safest choice would be to abstain from any drinking during pregnancy anyway. Myth, people who abstain from alcohol are alcohol free. This is a huge fact. I brought this one up to my wife. Every person produces alcohol normally in a 24-hour period each and every day from birth until death. Therefore, we are all have alcohol in our bodies. Myth. Alcohol abuse is an increasing problem among younger people. Fact is, heavy alcohol use among people in the U.S. 17 years of age or younger actually dropped by amazing two-thirds, thanks probably to the awareness being uh, uh, put out in the community. Uh, between 1985 and 1997, according to federal government research, the proportion of young people who consumed any alcohol within the previous months dropped from 50 to 19 percent in the same period. These are the top alcohol-consuming countries, and if you notice and listen carefully, you'll see that U.S. didn't even make the top 10. Number one on my list is Portugal, with a huge amount Number two, Luxembourg. Number three is France. Number four is Hungary. Number five is Spain. Number six, six is Czech Republic. Number seven is Denmark. Number eight is my home country coming far behind the first seven, but still on the top ten list, Germany. Number nine, Austria, and the last on the top ten is Switzerland. Folks, if you notice that every single, every single country on this list comes directly from Europe. What does that tell you? Let's continue. <clears throat> Myth. People in the U.S. are generally heavy consumers of alcohol. Fact is, the U.S. isn't even among the top ten that I just read to you. Myth. The U.S. has a very lenient underage drinking law. Fact is, the U.S. has the most strict youth drinking laws in the Western world. Myth, alcohol, alcohol advertising increases drinking problems. Fact is, hundreds of scientific research studies around the world have clearly demonstrated that alcohol advertising does not lead to increase in drinking abuse or drinking problems. Fact, uh, excuse me, myth, bottles of tequila contain a worm. 
Fact is, there is no worm in tequila. It's in mezcal, a spirit beverage distilled from different plant. Myth, people who can hold their liquor are to be envied. Fact is, people who can drink heavily without becoming intoxicated have, have probably developed a tolerance for alcohol, which can indicate the onset of dependency, otherwise known as alcoholism. Myth, many lives would be saved if everyone abstained from alcohol. Fact is, some lives would be saved from accidents now caused by intoxication and from health problems caused by alcohol abuse. However, many of other lives would be lost from increases of coronary heart disease. For example, estimates, <coughs> estimates from 13 studies suggest that as many as 135-884 additional deaths would happen each year in the U.S. from coronary heart disease alone because of abstinence. See alcohol and health in your Wikipedia. Last on my list is myth, drunkenness and alcoholism are the same thing. Fact is, many non-alcoholics on occasion become intoxicated or drunk. However, if they are not addicted to alcohol, they are not an alcoholic. These are the Friedrichs, believe it or not, fact or fiction. And I want to do a recap because I was thrilled to bring this onto your screen this morning because a lot of these are misconceptions. Alcohol destroys the brain cell. The fact is that moderate consumption of alcohol does not destroy your brain cells. White wine is a good choice of alcohol uh, because it has less calories. Fact is a glass of red wine, bottle of beer, a shot, all have equivalent amounts of alcohol and are the same to any breathalyzer. A beer belly is caused by drinking too much beer. The fact is, is that a beer belly is not caused by too much beer, but by too much food. Switching between beer, wine, and spirits can lead to intoxication more quickly than sticking to one alcoholic beverage. The fact is, the level of blood alcohol content, BAC, is what determines sobriety or intoxication. Drinking coffee will help a drunk person sober up. The fact is, is that drinking coffee, taking a cold shower, or sleeping it off will not do it. It is time that sobers the person. Drinking long, long enough will cause a person to become an alcoholic. Fact is, there is simply no scientific basis for this misperception, which appears to have its origin, temperance, and uh, some sort of ideology. Myth. Drinking alcohol causes weight gain. The fact is, is this is very commonly believed myth even among medical professionals, but it's not the alcohol, it's the amount of food you intake. Myth, alcohol is the cause of alcoholism. Fact is, is that as alcohol agencies have explained many times, alcohol is no more the cause of alcoholism than sugar is the cause of diabetes. The agency points out that uh, if alcohol caused alcoholism, then all drinkers would be alcoholics. Myth, if alcohol were less available, there would be fewer alcoholics. Fact is, there is an idea that has been tested through different uh, programs in the U.S. and a number of other countries. There is no association between the availability of alcohol and alcoholism as much as there is between the availability of drugs and the epidemic on the drug abuse in the world. Myth. College life leads to drinking by most students who enter as uh, non-drinkers. Fact is, according to federal statistics, most students arrive at the college with prior drinking experience anyway, so that is totally wrong. Next one on my list, binge drinking is an epidemic problem on college campuses. No, binge drinking can happen anywhere. It is when you drink, or well, let me give you the actual meaning. Binge drinking is clinically and commonly viewed as a period of extended intoxication lasting several days, during which time binge, dripper dro binge drinker drops out of the usual life activities. Myth. Men and women are the same height and weight can drink the same. Fact is, women are affected more rapidly because they tend to have a slightly higher proportion of fat to lean muscle uh, tissue, thus concentrating alcohol a little bit more easily in their lower percentage of body weight. Myth, a single sip of alcohol by a pregnant woman can cause 
her child to have uh, FAS, FAS, otherwise known as fetal alcohol syndrome. Fact is, extensive medical research studying hundreds of thousands of women from around the world fails to find scientific evidence that a light drinking, much less than a sip of alcohol, can uh, hurt the baby. But it is suggested by uh, uh, any medical uh, expert not to drink at all is the best situation. Myth, people who abstain from alcohol are alcohol free. The fact is, is that when we're, from birth until death, our body generates alcohol anyway. Uh, so that is uh, totally wrong. Myth, alcohol abuse is an increasing problem young, among young people. Fact is, is that among 17 and younger, it has decreased from 50 to 19%. Uh, and that is probably because of uh, videos like mine and maybe MAD and, and other educational programs. Top 10 countries in the world for alcohol abuse. And they are all from Europe, mind you. And U.S. is not one of those 10. Portugal in one as number one. And then down the list, Luxembourg, France, Hungary, Spain, Czech Republic, Denmark, my country, Germany. Austria and Switzerland. Those are the top 10. U.S. didn't even make the top 10. Myth. People in the U.S. are generally heavy consumers of alcohol. The fact is the U.S. didn't even make the top 10 consuming countries. So that explains that. Myth. The U.S. has a very lenient underage drinking law. The fact is this U.S. has the highest, most strict drinking for youths in the Western world. Myth. Alcohol advertising increasing increases drinking problems. Fact is, hundreds of scientific research studies around the world have clearly demonstrated that alcohol advertising does not lead to increase in drinking abuse or drinking problems. Fact, bottles of tequila contain, I mean, excuse me, not fact, myth, bottles of tequila contain a worm. Fact is, there is no worm in tequila. It is in mescal, a spirit beverage distilled from a different plant. Myth, people who can hold their liquor are to be envied. Absolutely not. People who can drink heavily without becoming intoxicated have probably developed a tolerance for alcohol, thus uh, have an onset for dependency resulting in alcoholism. Myth, many lives would be saved if everyone abstained from alcohol. Fact is, some lives would be saved from accidents now caused by intoxication and from health problems caused by alcohol abuse. However, Many other lives would be lost from increases in coronary heart disease. For example, estimates from 13 studies suggest that as many as 135,884 additional deaths would happen each year in the U.S. from coronary heart disease alone because of not drinking. Myth, and last on my list, drunkenness and alcoholism are the same thing. Fact is... Many non-alcoholics can occasion, uh, on occasion become intoxicated or drunk. However, if they are addicted to alcohol, they are not. If they're not addicted to alcohol, they are not alcoholics. This is what my previous video was saying, pretty much. If you are a sociable drinker, one drink a day for ladies, two possibly for men. That is sociable drinking. When you start doing four as ladies and five and six as men you are in the danger zone of becoming an alcoholic and once you start doing maybe seven or eight as a lady and uh, uh, 10 to 12 as a man you are now a full-blown alcoholic don't get me wrong I am NOT anti-drinking I am anti-drinking for me I am anti-drinking for alcoholics I am not anti-drinker, uh, anti-drinking policy or whatever you want to call it, for the person that knows how to handle it. For example, even Jesus and his disciples had wine. Another example, I know plenty of Christians that drink one, maybe two drinks during a sitting but they can handle their drinking. They don't need to, as the term goes, take the football and run with it. In my case, one or two drinks 
would be a tease. I would then have to continue to 10 to 15 drinks. That is why I am an alcoholic. That is why I am against drinking. Because of my actions, because of my disease, I don't promote drinking. However, each and every person has their own capacities, their own capabilities and tolerances. So for anyone that's watching me, that is a sociable drink, I am not downplaying your ability to drink. What I am saying is that everybody has a story. My story is, is I'm an alcoholic and I have a disease and my passion is to promote awareness for people that are out there that might have what I have. It's all about that. And if you are watching and you're doing or drinking four to six drinks a day, you are in a risk factor zone known as alcoholism. And it will only escalate further up as you continue. So let today, the 31st of January, be your first day in 2015 to be sober. Let a sober today give you a better tomorrow. You know, it's very hard for people to understand when I say just please quit drinking because I know what it's like. Because I started thinking, oh my God, I had to go for a whole week without drinking. But if you go on the concept of quit drinking 24 hours at a time and then the next 24 hours, it becomes easier. And if 24 hours seems a little far-fetched, break it down into four, six-hour time frames. You might quit and go for three, four days and then have a relapse. Folks, it happens. It happened to me plenty of times in the beginning. Six, seven times. Get up. Dust your knees. Stick your chest out. Walk straight and know that you did not fail, but you will continue. And each and every time you have a relapse and each and every time you get up and you move forward in life towards sobriety, you are becoming stronger. Your immune system is becoming stronger for sobriety. But you have to first admit you have a problem. You have to admit you have a problem. As long as you keep denying that you are an alcoholic, you'll never get better. I never wanted to admit it. I used to shake people's remarks off and say, I know I can quit anytime. Not true. If today is the day that you finally admit you have a problem, reach out to God and ask God for guidance and direction. Because you cannot beat alcoholism. You cannot fight addiction. You cannot recover without the grace of God in your life. Picture this. Your body is like a ship. Your mind is the captain. Your mind controls your body, just like a captain controls a ship. Any captain will never take their ship out in the rough oceans without navigation. But your captain cannot navigate your ship, because that's why you're drinking, abusing drugs. So why not reach to God and ask God to become your navigator? With the grace of God as your navigator and you as the captain, you will control your body known as the ship. Carrie Underwood said it best. Jesus, take the wheel. Let Jesus take the wheel of your ship, your vessel, your body. Let, it, let God take control of your life. And if you don't believe things will change, I am pure examples of changes my appearance has changed my financials have changed I've become happier and I smile more my physical body has changed on the inside spiritually I've changed those are all changes that will not happen overnight but will happen in time Folks, I don't even know how many days I've been sober. I can tell you it's getting close to 600. Why not start making today a sober today to give you a better tomorrow? If you say today that I'll take care of it tomorrow next week, I want to just remind you folks, 
You might not have a tomorrow. I might not have a tomorrow. I might not. For every breath you take right now, for every time you blink, there is someone in the world taking their last breath, closing their uh, eyes for the last time. Did they have a chance for change? As I sit in front of this camera in your living room, in your kitchen, in jail, in a homeless shelter or in a nursing home, or wherever you might be watching me, is today time for change? And if you want to think that you can change tomorrow, you are not guaranteed to be here tomorrow. God forbid when we all go, when we leave this earth, people will remember us from the ending more than any other part, more than the beginning, more than the middle. They will remember us from our end. Change today and let your ending be a good ending. Don't be remembered as an alcoholic. Don't be remembered as a drug abuser. Be remembered as that person that had a passion to help other people, that found sobriety, that eliminated the drugs and became a better father, a better mother, a better grandparent. Be that person. But it has to be now. There might not be a tomorrow. Folks, a sober today, I promise you, will give you a better tomorrow. If you let the sunshine into your heart and into your home, you will reap nothing but positive results. And when you think positive here, you will get positive wherever you're watching me. I hope to God each and every one of you in my audience not only has a sober today, not only has a better tomorrow, but I hope each and every one will take this message these facts and myths not only into your own heart but bring them out to the public share all my videos go to YouTube under the search bar type take your life back today show with Ralph Friedrichs go to my website www.takeyourlifebacktodayshow.com call me for any problems at 844-405-HELP and let me help you take your life back folks Please have a sober today and may God bless you. Take care.